Hey, super scientists, we're looking at evolution and how things change over time. So think about how you've changed since you were born. So you were probably much smaller. You probably didn't have a lot of hair or teeth, even skin coloration changes. So there's a lot of changes that take place from the time you're born until adulthood. Same thing with this cute fuzzy little penguin here. It's a tiny little baby. Now it's an adult form. Looks a lot different. Tadpole, drastically different from the frog. So we're looking at how things change over time. So keep those examples in your mind as we're talking about evolution. So look at these pictures. What are the similarities and differences between these three organisms? So take just a moment to record that in your notebook. So we have an elephant here. We have a woolly mammoth. And this is a paleomastodon. So the elephant has descended from the woolly mammoth. And the woolly mammoth descended from the paleomastodon. And that means the paleomastodon is an ancestor to the woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoth is an ancestor for the elephant. So you can see that there are a lot of similarities and differences. They have the basic body structure in, some, in common. They also have tusks. They have a long trunk, they have ears, um, they have kind of this curvature to their back, they have a tail, their forelegs. So there's a lot of things that they have in common. But the elephant ears, much larger than the, mam the mammoth or the paleomastodon. The tusk shape is a little different. These are a little straighter, a little shorter. The woolly mammoths are definitely a lot bigger and they're curved. And the paleomastodon has shorter tusks and also has these funny little teeth features at the end of the trunk here. And I think um, one of the biggest things that you'll probably notice that there's a difference is the trunk itself. So here's the trunk for the elephant, trunk for the mammoth, and then the trunk for the paleomastodon it actually splits in half like its mouth serves as the trunk too. So it's really weird. Then also, of course, the woolly mammoth has lots of hair. So evolution has just changed over time. It's how organisms have descended from ancient organisms, how things we have today are related to its ancestors in the past. So this is showing you the whole proboscidean family tree. These are all related to elephants in some way, just so you can see how there are lots of similarities and differences, just like the pictures we were just looking at. So you have your elephant, you got your mammoth, and you can see they all have tusk. Look at this guy's tusk. They're like straight down almost. Some of them have the split trunk mouth feature, like the paleomastodon. So a lot of things that are in common, they all look sort of elephant-like, but also a lot of striking differences too. So Charles Darwin is the scientist who came up with evolution. And this was based on his observations of the natural world because he was a naturalist. He was a scientist who studied the natural world. And he was also a preacher. He was trained as a preacher. That was his background. He was just amazed by all the different things that he observed in the world. And he was very curious. He wondered why. Why does this happen? Why do these things look similar? Why do all of these finches live in this area, but they all have different shaped beaks? So he wanted to be able to explain and figure out why these things were happening and why the things that he observed were the way they were. So take just a moment to observe the fossil that you have here and record your thoughts in your notebook. So this is an Archaeopteryx and Archaeopteryx is the missing link. It's referred to as the missing link between dinosaurs and birds. So you can see in this fossil that it does look very bird-like. It has a sort of bird-shaped skull, very small bone structure, sharp kind of talons. But what do you think these things are? Those are feathers. These are feather impressions in this fossil. These wings here indicate that this was a bird. And of course, we have the the feathers here too. So this is a picture of what the Archaeopteryx would have looked like. It's just an illustration so you can kind of get an idea of fossil to real life comparison. And at the place where I do dinosaur digs in the summer, Thermopolis, Wyoming, they have in their museum a display of an actual Archaeopteryx. And it's very rare because there's only been like six Archaeopteryx fossils that have been discovered uh, intact in the world. And a lot of them are in Europe, particularly in Germany. 
And this fossil, they have done um, spectral analysis testing on. So they've tested the chemical composition of the material that's found at the feathers. And they used to just think that was feather impression, but it's actually the decayed feather in a lot of cases. And they found the element cobalt. And finding the element cobalt indicates that the color of the Archaeopteryx feathers is sort of a bluish black color, a dark kind of blue. So the Archaeopteryx is the missing link. It lived about 150 million years ago, um, kind of in the middle of the Mesozoic era, and it had those claws and um, the talons, teeth like a dinosaur, but it also had wings and feathers. And a lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of raptors, even some juvenile tyrannosaurs, had feathers as well. Not covered in feathers completely like birds that we think of today, but they had small feathers. So reptiles had some features that are in common naturally with birds. We just don't know a lot of that information or it's not uh, very commonly known because the movie Jurassic Park wouldn't be as scary if you had raptors running around with feathers. They look like big chickens. So the um, movie industry kind of uh, takes its artistic liberty with that. So here is our bird. Here's a reptile, and this is the Archaeopteryx. So you can see the features that they have in common and the things that they still have different. And that's why it's considered the missing link because it does have similarities and with its uh, genetic um, features and the uh, phenotype that you're able to see, there are a lot of things that are in common with both organisms. So we're going to um, look at the different types of evolution. This is biological evolution, which is change in living organisms. You know, bio means life. And geological evolution is change in our surface. And that is um, geo, which is your stem for earth. And then technological evolution is how society is going to change and develop things to meet specific needs. So, for example, uh, telephones, like iPhones and such have not always been like they are right now. Used to have these big rotary dial phones, had a big old circly thing, and you had to like literally turn the whole dial around in order just to dial one number. And prior to that, telephone numbers were a lot shorter and you didn't have to put in your area code. So there's a lot of different ways that technology specifically has changed. Even if you think about medicine, if you get sick, you can go to the doctor and get medicine. Um, if you unfortunately have to have surgery to have like an appendix removed or appendicitis, or if you have gallstones or something like that, you can go to the doctor, you can go to the hospital and get treatment. And those things are developments of technology, which is the application of science. Think about some advances or changes in geology. So changing in Earth's surface like Pangaea, continental drift, plate tectonics, that's all change over time. The continents move at a rate of about an inch a year. So it's not a lot. It takes a long time. It evolves slowly. And biological evolutions, we're going to look more in depth at. So they're just changes in living organisms in general like adaptations. And the last thing is on page three, you have this nice picture of some Galapagos tortoises. So Charles Darwin did a lot of research in the Galapagos Islands. So it's a tropical area down towards South America. And he noticed through his observations of that particular area that there's a lot of organisms like finches and tortoises that are similar, but also based on looking at these different islands, they look kind of different. They have different adaptations. And one of the things he noticed about the tortoises is the neck. So if you take a comparison between all three of these tortoises, you can see they look pretty similar. They all look like turtles, right? They look like tortoises. They have a shell, they have four legs, they have kind of extended neck. However, which one of these has the shortest neck? This is about island turtle or tortoise. So which one of these tortoises would be able to reach food that was farther away? which one would be able to get food that was only really close to it. So think about those kind of things because those tortoises are adapted to those specific needs or to those specific things that might be in their environment. They have adapted to be best suited to their environment. So that's on page three.